families on today, brothers and sisters? Are you excited about what God has done? Hasn't he brought you from a mighty, mighty, mighty long way? And he has truly been good to me. He has been a blessing to me. Our scripture this morning is coming from Psalms 119, 9-11, and I will slow it down. This is for the children on today. And the words read as follows. Wherewith shall a young man cleanse his way by taking heed thereto according to thy word? With my whole heart have I sought thee. Oh, let me not wander from thy commandments. 11. Thy word have I hid in mine heart that I might not sin against thee. The blessed word of God for the blessed people of God. Brothers and sisters, on Palm Sunday, we are reminded of a contrast between living a godly life in a world filled with temptations and challenges. Today is Palm Sunday. This is when Jesus rode in with his triumphant entry into the city of Jerusalem a week before he was crucified. And brothers and sisters, it is a day to reflect on how we can maintain our faith and our integrity, even when faced with adversity. As we carry our palm branches into the celebration to our risen Savior, let us strive to live a life that is pleasing to him. Let us stay true to our beliefs and values, even in a world that may try to lead us astray. Brothers and sisters, we must maintain our purity. Yes, I'm talking to everyone in here today, but I'm especially talking to the youth. What is purity? James defined purity as being unspotted from the world. And that's my prayer for our young people and indeed everyone here this morning, that you would live in such a way that you would remain unspotted from the world. I know it's difficult, but you can do all things that through Christ that strengthen you. I pray that everyone listening to me this morning has a desire for purity. So I want to talk to you first, just a few moments, about walking down the narrow road of righteousness. In Psalms 119, the psalmist asks a question. Perhaps you have asked yourself this question. How can I keep my my purity when I'm surrounded by evil influences? You see, I'm I'm an older gentleman, and it is difficult being my age trying to stay pure in this evil world. So I can't imagine how difficult it is for our youth. How can a young person keep their way, brothers and sisters? That word way means way of living on the road of life. What road of life are you talking about, Pastor Searles? I'm talking about the narrow road. I'm talking about the road less traveled. I'm talking about the lonely road where because you are holy, your friends look at you and call you goody two-shoes. I'm talking about the righteous road, the road that is the only way to the Father. I'm talking about the godly road, the the step street that Jesus rode his donkey in on. Everybody talk about the street that he went to the cross on, but he went to the step. He, he, he actually went down the step street to Jerusalem on a donkey during his triumphant entry. I'm talking about the Via Dolorosa road that he carried his cross on. I'm talking about the road called Via Dolorosa in here on today. You have to take up your cross, young brothers and sisters, and walk the road of Via Dolorosa as well. Not the wide road That's that most of your friends are traveling. They are on the crowded road, that road that lets you do what you want to do, the road that lets you smoke and drink. They are on the road that lets you curse and hurt others. You see, they are on the road that lets them lie and steal, the road that lets them procrastinate and cheat. You don't want to be on that road. You know the road that the world travels? If if you find yourself traveling this road, get off of it because this road leads directly to the gates of hell. This morning, you can't travel the wide road. You have to travel the road of purity. I'm talking about the road that leads to heaven. The only way to the Father is the road we must travel through Jesus Christ. Are you on that road today? You see, here the psalmist, who at least was a young man or had been a young man at some point, is asking himself the question, how can I get pure and stay pure as I walk down the road of life? Today, he might put it this way, how can I live a God-rated life in a devil-rated world? And here's the answer. 
answer that he is given by taking heed or living according to God's word. Yes. The word of God says, with my whole heart I have sought you. Oh, let me not wander from your commandments. Your word I have hidden in my heart that I might not sin against you. In other words, the answer to life's greatest, most gripping questions are now just not just how to live in a world that has gone bad, brothers and sisters, but how to thrive in a world that has gone bad. You see, God told you, God told you how to get pure, but you got to want to stay pure. Brothers and sisters, how do you stay pure? Now, this information is found in the Bible. Young people, I want you to listen in here today. The Bible really is your owner's manual. The Bible really is your instruction book for the life that you want to live, the life that God has designed for you. The Bible is full of life's lessons and practical advice on how to live and how to make a life. And one of the best and most needed lessons that many people, young and old alike, need to learn today is found here in Psalms 119, verses 9 through 11. It is the lesson of how to have a life of personal purity. Because the devil comes in and the devil wants to take you off the track of purity. I don't know whether you realize it or not, but there's really nothing more personal than an issue of purity. It determines who you are and what you are. What are you in here on today? Brothers and sisters, are you a child of God or are you a child of the devil? Because if you don't live a pure life, then you are going to be a child of the devil. Think about it. Everywhere you turn, everything you see, everything Everything you hear seems to be geared towards soiling your soul. Amen. Brothers and sisters, it seems to be geared towards contaminating your conscience. Amen. There is trash for your eyes. There is trash for your ears. There is trash for your hearts. Perversion and pornography Amen. runs rampant on television, on the internet, on the radio, and now even on your cellular phones. So the question is, how do I live in a G-rated, in a God-rated, live a God-rated life in a devil-rated world? Wow. My subject today is living a God-rated life in a devil-rated world. Now, I'm talking to the youth in here on today because most of us as adults, we've been through what we call this stage of our lives when we're growing and we're dealing with peer pressure and we're dealing with trying to understand right and wrong. And brothers and sisters, we know the way we are. We are what I would call seasoned Christians yes. in Christ. But they are learning the way. They have to deal with education. They have to deal with their surroundings. They have to deal with the laws of the land. And it is confusing to them. They have to deal with when their friends do wrong, whether it it, it, it has anything to do with their morals should they report it. So they endure a lot and they have to understand that we are there to support them. Yes. Brothers yes. and sisters, my dear brothers and sisters, today I want to address a pressure, a pressing issue that is affecting our youth today. You see, one thing about our youth is they succeed so much at such a young age that we expect them to do great, but we don't realize the pressure that they are under. They are under pressure to perform in sports. They are under pressure to perform in their environment. They are under pressure to maintain, brothers and sisters, a persona. They are under pressure to, to, to do good in school. When I was a kid, I didn't have to worry about any of these things. I just took life with the ebb and flow as it came about. But see, they are so much into being successful today, and the world judges them on being successful. And here we are. We're looking at what they're going through, and we don't understand the pressures that they endure. So we have to help them through those times because they have to deal with extracurricular activities. They have to deal with the friends that don't believe the way they believe. They have to deal with with a world that lies in cheap and they're trying to live holy and righteous. Let's give these children a hand in here. But we have some magnificent children in this place for today. Brothers and sisters, they have to deal with social media. You know, when I was a kid, we didn't have cell phones and social media. You see, I was a little fish in a little pond. But see, they are a little fish in a big pond. And they see things that they're not supposed to see at such a young age. But they maintain and handle it so well. Yes, they might trip up a little bit here or there, but they get back on track. I've never seen children so focused like these young kids in here on today. Amen. 
Then they have to deal with the influences of peer pressure and social norms. Peer pressure can have both a positive and a negative effect. You see, if you get around somebody who is going in the direction that you're going, who is traveling that narrow road, <laughs> Then you're in the right peer pressure. But see, if you get around somebody that is traveling the, the, the broad road, then you are enduring negative peer pressure. Because when you're on that road, that narrow road, then you associate yourself with someone who is going in the direction that you're going in. And where are you trying to get? You are trying to get to your purpose. Brothers and sisters, if you want to get to your purpose, then you have to surround someone who has been at the place that you want to get to. Or who is at the place that you're trying to get to. You see, you have to get into a circle of people who are focused, who are studying the Bibles, who are on their knees praying, who can help you get a prayer through, who can help you endure brothers and sisters what is going on in the environment that you are not a part of. You see, you are the light and the darkness. And what you're supposed to do, instead of trying to conform, you are supposed to reform. That means you're supposed to get them out of their thinking and put them into a God-like thinking. Be proud of who you are because God called you out. God made you successful and God made you unique and God wants you to draw them out of their darkness and put them into your life. So don't worry about your naysayers. When you come face to face with them, then let the Lord have his way because God will instruct you on what to do and what to say. But don't never step out of your purpose because God has designed you a specific way. And don't you worry about what society thinks and what society says. You be you in here on today and forevermore. You are beautiful and magnificent. You are great. You are successful. And you are traveling within your purpose. And then, brothers and sisters, there are temptations to conform to worldly standards. An example of temptation to conform to worldly standards include the pressure to dress a certain way. See, you can't be godly in dressing any kind of way. You see, when you're godly, you have to have modesty. You have to have chastity. See, you can't dress like the other girls. So they look at you in a negative force, in, in a negative fashion. But let me tell you this. A God doesn't want to see it all hanging out. A God wants to have some kind of vision, right. some kind of way to think of what he's right. getting. He doesn't want to see everything up front. You see what I'm saying? That's not the way guys are, 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 are built up. They want to get a surprise down there in the end. So you can't dress any kind of way. You can't put on the tightest clothes that you can find. You can't put on the shortest dress that you can find. You can't be like them because you are not like them. You see, they don't have the opportunity that you have. You are born in a family that you are blessed in and you have to maintain that statement brothers and sisters so that they can look and be inspired by your life because your life is a great life. Huh? I wish I had the hand that you have. I wish I could play the, the hand that you have because if I had the opportunities that some of you have huh, I would be greater than what I am today because I didn't know Jesus at a young age. I know some people that knew him when he was when they were young and they got ahead of life far faster than I ever did. And then you have these parents. Here we are. We are we are there for you. We are concerned about you. We're concerned about your moral state of mind because in a society like ours, when kids are wearing foxtails, when boys are dressing like girls, when girls are dressing like boys, uh, you have to have a state of mind that tells you who you truly are. And when you know Jesus, you have the Holy Spirit and the Holy Spirit is indwelling in you uh, and the Holy Spirit can tell you who you are. You know who you are. You can't be like the devil. You see, the devil will try to draw you out of who you are, of your identity, so that when he gets you out of your identity, he can use you any kind of way that he wants to. He wants to get you out of the umbrella of God's safety. But if you stay under that umbrella, brothers and sisters, then God is going to keep you and God is going to fulfill your destiny. I'm almost done. Our young people are looking like they're bored out of their mind. 
But brothers and sisters, this message is for you on today. I'm trying to tone it down just a little bit for you to comprehend it. All I'm trying to say in here on today is simply this. You were set apart. You have been called by God. God has fulfilled a destiny in you. All you have to do is just wait on the name of the Lord. And when you get in a dire situation in your friends and society, is closing in on you. See, you have to stay godlike in a devil like world. Or you have to stay godly in a devilish world. Brothers and sisters, because the enemy is coming in. You see, you're not fighting against your friends. You're fighting against principalities and spirits in, in, in dark places. And they come into your life. They come into your circle. You see, some people don't know that we entertain angels unaware. You never know who you're dealing with. Uh, not only do they come into your circle and they entertain you unaware, huh, but they try to get you off track. Huh. They try to take you and make you get into a state of being in the world because the enemy desires to steal, kill, and destroy. <laughs> and he desires to steal your very life huh, because God has predestined that you were going to be great. Huh. Great in this world and great in the world to come. And you just look at Jesus Christ. He leaned in the pen dead on the Lord. I'm trying to determine if I want to end this sermon. I'll go a little bit further and talk about the devil in here on the day. You see, I've got news for you young people and all the life. The devil doesn't care how old you are. He don't care how good you look. He don't care what color you are. He don't care what the demographic is. He don't care about your economical status. He just don't like you because he don't like you because you are blessed, super blessed and getting better. But I got news for you. We don't care what the devil think you here. And we saw a notice on him because we are children of the Lord. We are covered by the blood of Jesus and our parents are helping us as we travel down the road of life. I cannot get a witness in here. When your faith is being attacked, it's nothing but the devil. You see, when you are being attacked, it is nothing but Satan or an imp. And if you got it going on, then he's not going to send a little simple imp to harass you. He's going to send a mature imp to harass you. But I got news for you in here. You see, your parents are mature in the spirit. You see, the mothers in the church and the, and the brothers and sisters mm. mothers in the church are mature in the spirit. The men Ministers and the deacons and the trustees uh, and the pastor are mature in the spirit. Uh, the community of saints are mature in the spirit. Uh, and even if you are a young person, then you had better put on the armor of God uh, and let the spirit of God carry you through. Uh, I know it gets difficult in here on some times. I know I want to fit in the crowd on some times. I know I want to dress the way they dress sometimes. Uh, I know I want to go to the parties that they go to sometimes. Uh, I know I want to talk to the God that looks this type of way sometimes. I know I want to talk to that girl over there that's scheduled to dress sometimes. But I am a child of the Lord and I am godly brothers and sisters in a devilish world and I am drawn away from that because I got the Holy Spirit dwelling deep down in me. Can I get a witness in here? You see, you might think you know what you want, but God has determined what you're going to get. And if you lean in the pen and trust in the name of the Lord, then God will see you through. I'm almost done in here on today. Brothers and sisters, what can we do, brothers and sisters, to help our children? Number one, we got to get them out of bed on Sunday mornings. We got to get them out of bed on Tuesday night Bible study. And we got to get them to the house of the Lord. We got to read our Bibles and study with them. We have to pray with them. We have to educate them. Because as soon as they go to school, they start talking this this evolution nonsense, talking about something came from nothing, when in actuality, they're trying to teach our children that nothing came from nothing. You see, you've got to understand this. They say a lot of things about dinosaurs and the flood and all of this type of stuff, but if you get into your Bible, your Bible explains. 
explain things uh, that the that that science didn't comprehend until the 1950s and the 1970s. Uh, we're talking about the signature in the cell. Uh, they're saying that something came from nothing. Uh, but I got news for you. Uh, they determined a long time ago that the universe was eternal. Uh, and then they got some telescopes uh, and they put their ingenuity together and then they looked through the time barrier and they saw that the universe was finite. So they had to come up with another plan. And then they determined that they don't know what happened. Maybe it was a parallel universe that hit and it created so much energy that it created a universe that is throwing anything out there. And now they're saying that it was five billion years old when I was in school. And then when I went to college, it was 18 billion years. And now it's 13 and a half billion. So it's all about uh, proper conception, brothers and sisters. Uh, and then they had the nerve to say uh, that if the universe uh, was created from nothing, it would take 50 billion years. Uh, it's not that old. Uh, but there is a God. Uh, and we know that God has to exist because something has to be eternal. And since the universe is an eternal, then it has to be an eternal God. Uh, that is the answer to the question. Uh, and once you have that answer, then they can't tell you anything about evolution because there's a signature in the cell. When you look at the cell that human beings have, it's called DNA, and something has to instruct that cell what to do. You see, it begins to multiply when conception happens, brothers and sisters, and then it splits and splits and splits, and then all of a sudden it becomes coded, and it tells it to perform a skin, a heart, a brain, and such and such. You see, some Somebody had to input that code into the cell, but they can't explain that. But see, we have to let our kids know what the Bible says about all of this stuff. The Bible talks about the jet stream and the streams under the sea in the book of Job. And they didn't figure it out until the 1956s. But God said in here on today that I am the way, the truth, and the life. Anybody that comes to me will find the way to the Father. And you young people, let's understand something. When you're going through, uh, when it seems like the world is closing in on you, then be the light uh, in that darkness. Let the Lord use you. Uh, don't worry about your friends uh, because you're drawing them. Uh, they're inspired by your life. Uh, don't be inspired by their dark life. Uh, draw them out of darkness if you carry anything about them. Uh, let me tell you a story about someone named Jesus Christ. Uh, I'm just about uh, ready to go to my seat. I'm staying behind the podium on today if the Lord let me. But I'm feeling good in my sanctified soul. Can I get a witness in here on today? God has been good to us. God has been better to us than we could ever imagine. God has blessed us with these beautiful, unique, intelligent children and God wants to use them in here on today. God is saying to the parents in this place to encourage your children, to love your children, to instruct your children, to let them know uh, that I made a way uh, in the middle of the desert. Uh, I made a way uh, for them to be successful. I made a way for them to be in peace. Uh, I made a way to draw them, uh, brothers and sisters, and their friends out of darkness uh, into the light. Uh, because I sent my son, Jesus Christ, uh, who yes, went down through 40 and two generations. Uh, and here on this Palm Sunday, uh, let's set the stage. Uh, here Jesus is. Uh, he's been through his ministry. He's trusted the Lord. In his time of weakness, just like you, little brothers and little sisters, you can go down on your knees uh, and you can pray to the Lord uh, whenever uh, temptation is closing in around you, uh, whenever uh, Peer pressure is closing in around you. Uh, you can read your word uh, and go to someone who can instruct you. Uh, but have a relationship with God. Uh, you've got to have a relationship with God. Uh, in a, in a, if you want to be godly in a devil-rated society. You see, Jesus is setting the stage. Uh, Jesus is getting ready to go into the city. Uh, because Jesus knew uh, that he had to bring godliness uh, in a devilish world. Uh, and Jesus is saying to you on today uh, that you got to bring godliness uh, into a devilish world. Uh, you got to bring the light uh, into the darkness. Uh, so Jesus is riding in on the donkey. And they're throwing palms trees all over the place. Uh, they're putting their clothes down uh, and they're saying Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna to the highest 
this uh, and what you're doing uh, when you act godly uh, in a devil rated world. Uh, they're throwing their palm branches down uh, and they're saying holy, holy, holy to the highest uh, because they see the Jesus in you uh, and the Jesus in you uh, love the Jesus that's not in them, uh, but you're trying to bring it to them. Uh, and that Jesus is trusting in the Lord. Uh, you see, when God blessed Jesus uh, to come in on the donkey, he didn't get the big head uh, whenever everybody was talking uh, and praising him. Uh, since God has blessed you with a mind, uh, since God has blessed you with attributes uh, greater than your peers, uh, the world wants to reward success, but you cannot get the big head because before the fall, you will endure pride, and pride goes before the fall. God is saying in here, those blessings are mine. Yes, brothers and sisters, those blessings are gifts from above. They're not talents. You see, you don't have a talent because you don't use it for the devil. You have a gift because God wants you to use it for him. And as Jesus is riding in on this donkey, a donkey represents humility. God wants you to stay humble because he has blessed you. But the world wants you to get prideful so the devil can make you fall. But here Jesus is riding in on the donkey with humility. And as he goes through the next several days, he finds himself walking down another street. You see, the street he traveled was the narrow road. And what he's saying is you have to stay on the narrow road. You can't be like your friends. You can't be like the world because the devil is in them, but God is in you. So Jesus finds himself being beat in brothers and sisters. He's leaning on the Lord. His peers don't like him. His peers have talked about him. His peers have struck him. His peers have has hit him in the face. Uh, they spit on him. They 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 deglorify him. They declassify him. And your peers are going to do that to you too. Uh, if they did it to Jesus, then they're certainly going to do it to you. Uh, but stay steadfast and immovable, always abounding in the love of the Lord, because God is your strength, and God will see you through. Uh, and here Jesus is in the Garden of Gethsemane, being betrayed by a kiss. Uh, all of his friends running away from him and leaving him lonely. Yes, you'll find yourself lonely sometimes, but there was Peter, John, brothers and sisters, and James. They were there in the garden before they all dispersed. You see, he had a circle that he traveled around, his disciples. He had people just like him that he could trust. And you got to have people just like you that you can trust. But in the end, even they betrayed him. They left him by himself. He had to deal with the whole world on his own. And here he is uh, carrying a cross down another narrow road, the same road that you have to carry. The same road that you have to travel is called the Via Dolorosa. He has a cross on his back. Two railroad tracks, brothers and sisters, on his back. He can't carry it, but Simon of Cyrene help him carry his cross. There's a Simon waiting to help you through your time of darkness. And here he is on the cross. Brothers and sisters, he's dependent on his father. He's there's darkness over the land. And then the rain begins to fall. And he's on the cross. Even God is on the cross. And God is still saying, Into thy hands I commend my spirit. He trusts the Lord. And God is saying in here today that you have to trust him. But even in his humanity, he says, My, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? Sometimes you're going to feel forsaken. But on the third day, he rose with all. All power. And now he sits on the right hand of the Father. And what God is simply saying in here on today, on this Palm Sunday, is you got to have a spirit of humility. But at the same time, you got to be godly in the devil rated world. That's the word on today. Being godly in the devil rated world. It is difficult being a saint of God. For me, it's not. Because I know what God has to offer. And it's nothing but goodness. It's nothing but mercy. The thing I know about God is, when he died on the cross, he made everything possible. All of my dreams will and have came true. And the thing he's saying to us on today is, 
don't jump on this bandwagon for the gifts. Because sometimes you're going to go through some ups and you're going to go through some downs. But when you're in your down state, he's building you and making you stronger because he has something greater in store for you. What God is saying in here on today is, it's going to be difficult sometimes, and you are set apart, but you are a royal priesthood, and that's why you're set apart. You are a queen, and you are a king, and yes, you are supposed to act becoming in that manner, so you can't act like everybody else. You have to act, brothers and sisters, the way the kingdom is supposed to, the way a person from the kingdom is supposed to act. You have to endure your heredity, and that is a child of God. You see, when God saved your soul, then you no longer were privy to the grips of the enemy. And when God saved your soul, simply, it made you a child of God. And when you became a child of God, then it made you holy, it made you righteous, and it made you godly. So we have to be god rated in a devil-rated world because he's given us the strength, the power, and the authority and the capability through his strength to be so. Amen. If you know God has been good to you, will you please stand to your feet? We just don't know the gift that we have in store for us. All we have to do is have faith and believe that all things are possible through Christ. Brothers and sisters, whenever you're struggling and whatever you're going through, just lean and depend on the Lord and understand. Everything you desire is waiting for you to manifest it through your prayers and through your praise. He's already provided everything you need because his riches are matchless. They're unconceivable. All you have to do is just wait a little while because with God, nothing shall be impossible. He's granted you your joy. He's granted you your peace. He's granted you your intellect. He's granted you your degree. He's granted you your home. He's granted you your car. He's granted you your bank account. He's granted you eternal life. And he's granted you your health and your strength. Don't let the enemy lie to you. But you will not receive any of these walking down the broad road. If you're on the broad road of today, then you need to get back on the narrow road. Because all of your gifts, including your grace and your mercy, is on that narrow road. Don't worry about what your peers do, what your peers say, and how your peers act, and how your peers dress. Look at your life and be thankful for it because it's super blessed and it's getting better and it's yours. And don't let the devil try to take that away from you because God has endowed you with a great and beautiful life. And I thank God Everything he's done. At this time, when the children come around the altar, and yeah, sir, would you anoint them? And anyone else that desires prayer, if you want to come closer, God told us to bring our gifts to the altar. He is the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, and He is to be worshipped. He is to be exalted and highly lifted up. And He says, "Come to Me." All ye who are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke and learn to me, for I am meek and lowly in heart. And you should find rest unto your soul. For my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. Cast your burdens upon the Lord on today. And watch him do a miraculous work in your life. Let us pray, O oh, heavenly and righteous God. Here we are once and again, standing in a need of prayer. Lord, we certainly can't make it without you, but God, we rely on your strength on today. Not on our power, not on our strength.
but only on your grace and your mercy. Lord, I authorize now your children standing around the altar. God, to be strong in your will and to be strong in the power of your might. God, I authorize in the name of Jesus now for them to continue to travel the narrow road that leads to heaven, the narrow road that leads to their predestination, the narrow road that leads to their purpose. And Lord, let their light shine brighter than ever now. Let them be confident in who they are and who you made them to be. For there is none like them. They are unique in every way, form, and fashion. Now, Lord, endow them now, God, to be able to traverse this deadly world, God, of sin. And God, purify them now and keep them pure and separated and set apart from the environment that they find themselves in. God, as they're going through and they become weak. God, strengthen them as only you can. And God, let them develop a relationship with you where they want to serve you first and foremost. And not what the enemy is trying to entice them with. The enemy is trying to draw them away from your security, from your love in God, from your perfection. But God, we thank you now for when Jesus went to the cross and he died, he took all of those imperfections. And God, he made them perfect only through Jesus Christ. And God, we thank you now for your enduring love. God, continue to show them, God, the way that they need to travel. And God, stay close to them. Put a hand of protection all around them to protect them from the from the seducing spirits of Satan. And Lord, let them know that as long as you're for them, then you're greater than the whole world against them. That nothing shall come into their presence that you cannot eradicate. And God, we thank you for if there's nothing, God, that they need, then just bless them with your grace and your mercy on today. But God, give them protection now. And God, shield them from the ways of evil. And God, put a, put a force field around them that's going to shield them from the devilish world. And God, let them be godly and stand bright in the darkness of peer pressure. We thank you. We magnify you. We thank you for these beautiful children that you've given us. Uh, for they have been endowed with so many talents. And God, you have given them so many gifts. And let them know and comprehend, God, uh, that you are better than anything they could ever desire. That you and them is the majority. That you can stand against anything that will rear its ugly head in their lives. Now, God, let them stay focused on the plan that you have for their life because you know what things end before it's beginning. Give them a peace, God, that surpass all understanding now. And let them forevermore rest, rule, abide, hence now and forevermore in your glory, in your majesty, in your peace, in your security, and in your love. We thank you, we magnify you, and we bless your name. We ask this prayer in the name of the Father, Son, and blessed Holy Spirit. And in Jesus' name.